All right, guys, here's what I have for you today. I'm going to have you guys go ahead and uh, review sections 1, 4, and 1, 5. So there's a lot of terminology in here. There's some equations we're setting up and we're trying to solve. And so I, I, you know, I'm going to walk you through a couple of things that I think are going to be uh, necessary, maybe a little more challenging. And then I want to see what you guys can do with the rest of it. So with that being said, let's hop right into it. I'm going to get right into the very first section here. Um, first of all, we're going to classify the angles as right, acute, and obtuse, and we're going to use a protractor to measure it. So in taking a look at the angle, uh, I'm going to look at number four specifically, QMO, okay? And as I look at it, it looks like a right angle to me, but I don't know for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my protractor here, <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and measure it. Now, I used to have some smaller protractors, uh, which were nice and handy for smaller diagrams like this. Um, can't seem to find them. I think someone borrowed them last year and I don't know where they went. So uh, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to place my vertex and my angle right there as you look at that. And I'm, uh, I'm, my zero is right on that. And I'm going to follow the interior track. So I'm up here at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Uh, I don't know, 90, 99 is kind of what it looks like, 99, 100, somewhere in there. So I'm going to put down that I have a 99 degree angle, okay? And if it's more than a, uh, 90, it's going to be an obtuse measurement, okay? So those two are the two classifications there. So I wanted to review how to use the protractor real quick and then also, uh, you know, obtuse, greater than 90, less than 180, uh, acute, less than 90, greater than zero, and right is equal to 90. All right. Now, the next section, um, I really like these problems. I think I've said that before. Um, so let's take a look here at what we have. If I can get my camera adjusted correctly. There we go. Um, here's what it says. In the figure, we have BA and BC. So BA and BC are opposite rays. I'm thinking to myself, 180 degrees right there. Okay. And we're told that uh, BD bisects angle EBC, okay? Now, if you remember, what is it I want you to remember about bisects? What, what's the phrasing? To cut in half, right? Because when we cut something in half, we have two equal parts. So if BD bisects this angle, that means that both of these angles are the same measure, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mark my diagram out like this. And I'm going to do the same thing for the next diagram. Okay. Now, uh, you should, let me just look at the directions there. Yeah, you should be able to figure out number five pretty easily now that we've got that picture marked out. Okay. Um, if I look at number six, this is usually the one that gives us the most difficulty in number six. So if I look at this, they give us angle EBD, so this angle right here, and they give us angle EBC, which is this angle right here. Okay, so they got this acute angle and then this larger acute angle, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you this, that a lot of times students will make this mistake. Angle EBD is equal to angle EBC, okay? But I'm going to tell you that is not the case. Those two angles are not congruent. This angle is obviously larger than this angle, okay? So the question then becomes, uh, how can I kind of piece these together. How can I make this all fit into an equation so that they are equal? Well, think to yourself, well, I'm debating whether I should give this to you, but how much bigger is EBC than EBD, okay? If they're both equal, okay? So knowing that, you should be able to adjust your equation, okay, based off what we just looked at right there, and then go ahead and solve for x. And don't forget to find the measure, again, that m means measure, of angle EBC, okay? Um, a quick hint about the last problem, number seven here on the first page. They're giving us information about angle EBC. They're giving us information about angle BOC. I'm sorry, did I say that wrong? AOB and BOC, okay, those two angles. And they're giving us information about angle COD. Hmm. Well, a hint would be, what do we know about two of the angles in the picture? Okay. 
That's all you really need to know to figure out what x is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys try to figure that out. Okay, on the back side, uh, if we look at the very top part, mm -hmm. get that adjusted there. All right. Um, it says this, well, uh, I'm not going to go over things, but you're going to identify the angles here. You've got some acute and vertical, okay? So you got to know what acute is, less than 90, vertical, that they're opposite each other um, across two intersecting lines, okay? Um, you also have uh, obtuse, you have linear pair, acute and adjacent, so less than 90 and they're next to each other, okay? Complementary, what does that mean? Uh, maybe you're going to look that up. Okay, supplementary, what does that mean? All right, and then we have these, these uh, word problems. So uh, I'm actually, let's see here. Let's work through number 15 together, okay? If I look at number 15, here's what it says. The measure of the supplement of an angle is 36, uh, it should be degrees, less than the measure of the angle. Find the measure of the angles. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I know that we're talking about supplementary angles when it talks about the measure of the supplement, I'm going to go ahead and do something like this, angle 1 and angle 2, because I know what supplementary means. It means that the sum of two angles has to equal 180 degrees, okay? Now from there, where my mind goes is what does it mean to be less than? Less than means to subtract, right? Okay, so uh, this angle over here, the is means equals, okay? This angle over here is 36 degrees less than this other angle over here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and define this other angle as x, and I'm gonna define this other angle, angle two, as x minus 36, because it's 36 degrees less than that. Okay, so after I've got those two angle measurements defined based on that sentence, I can then plug them back in and solve for x, okay? So if I add 36 to 180, uh, I get 216. Bring the x's together, I get 2x. And if I divide by 2, I get 108, okay? So x is 108, and if I take 108 minus 36, uh, 6, so that'd be 102 minus 36, so 72. So 108 and 72 would be my two measurements, and that's good because what's 108 plus 72? That gives me back to 180, okay? The measures of the angles... I'll say something like this, angle 1 equals 108, and angle 2 equals 72. Okay, and all I did was plug the 108 back in there and subtract 36, okay? Um, the only other thing that I think I should go over with you to make sure that we're okay is going to be this, this upside down T. What did we say the other day that that meant? That meant perpendicular, right? Perpendicular. Okay, and what does perpendicular mean? It means two lines that intersect to form right angles. Okay, and so what you want to do is you will want to put TR and TS is a right angle and then see if you can go ahead and solve number 16 and 17. Okay. So I hope that that was a quick enough introduction. I never want to um, drag you on. Um, but uh, if you find that you have questions, please come back and see me. Uh, I would love to be able to help you out. Um, don't want you to come to class uh, the next day uh, with too many questions because we do have other things to cover. So I hope that you have a great night, and I will talk to you later.